Hello and welcome to Astronomy with Mr Gerin. In this special video, which is not part of the GCSE course and includes no astronomy, I'm going to talk about why I started this channel and how I make my videos. I'll discuss the various software I use and how I plan and organise my productions. I hope this is interesting to a few people and it would be amazing if I encouraged somebody to do something similar. So, I'm Mr Gerin and I teach physics and astronomy at a school in the UK. You can take a GCSE in astronomy. There's only one such course, offered and examined by edXL. There's no A-level in astronomy, but GCSE astronomy is popular as an extra option for both GCSE and A-level students. I've run the GCSE as a timetable subject and as an after-school club. In 2019, I looked for a video series on GCSE astronomy to help my students revise. There are plenty of astronomy channels on YouTube, but none fit the bill. They're typically basic videos for younger children, highly advanced videos for physics graduates, or channels by amateur enthusiasts, which can be very good, but don't cover the course content. So I decided to start my own channel. My first video was Size and Distance of Earth, Moon, Sun, partly inspired by hearing a flat Earth believer claim that we have no evidence for these. I had no video creation skills at all then, beyond pressing record on my smartphone. I still have very little skill. My videos are hardly professional quality, but they've definitely improved a bit. I had to learn everything from scratch. I researched video, audio and image editing software, and then had to learn how to use them. I don't intend to become an expert in any of these programs, I just decide what I want to achieve, then figure out how to do it, either on my own or with Google's help. So if there's a feature I don't need, I don't learn it. I estimate it takes me about one hour to produce one minute of video including research, production of assets, recording and editing. I don't make videos to any kind of schedule, but just do them when I have time and feel inspired. There's a lot of advice from successful YouTubers about having a schedule, producing content daily or weekly to keep viewers coming back. I don't care about that, nor about subscriber counts or viewing hours. I might one day make money from YouTube, though I doubt it, but I'll never monetize this channel. If my astronomy students are all subscribed, that's great. And they actually care more about my subscriber count than I do. As I record this, I've uploaded 16 videos, and I should finish the course with about 25 videos. After making about 3 videos, I developed a routine that has served me well so far, which I'll go through in this video. I did have the notion of recording myself live as I make a video. I may or may not do that in the future. One thing to note, I haven't spent a penny on this channel. That's not a good thing or a bad thing, just a little extra challenge to myself. I use a laptop and headphones I already owned, and all the software I use is free and mostly open source. Sure, you can buy something like Adobe After Effects, but you can do what I've done for free. So what's my process? First, I downloaded the course specification from edXL's website. I put this into a spreadsheet, Google Sheets to make it easier if I want to share it. Then I analysed each learning objective and grouped them into specific videos. This lets me keep track of my progress and make sure I don't miss anything. Each objective is assigned a video number. This helps when I need to reference a specific previous video. Conditional formatting lets me easily see which topics I haven't done yet. And filters let me see all the topics for a particular video, completed or planned. When I start work on a new video, I create a slideshow in LibreOffice Impress. LibreOffice is a free and open source Office suite, on a par with Microsoft Office or Google Docs suite. I use the same basic format and layout each time, so I make a copy of the previous slideshow and edit that. Next, I'll copy the course specification for the video from the Google Sheet into the slideshow as a handy reference. This slide doesn't make it into the final video. I sort the objectives into a logical order and structure, you can see one of these here. Then I start typing. I usually have a pretty good idea of what I want to say, but it's important that I give you accurate information, so I always make sure I'm correct. I use Google a lot in this process. I have a degree in astrophysics, but that doesn't mean I'm always right, and I've actually learned a lot about recent advancements in astronomy while making these videos. I use a lot of pictures. These are useful for learning, and who doesn't love pictures? Ideally, I'll find what I need online, but not everything already exists, and some of what does isn't royalty-free. 
I found some really basic images that cost hundreds of US dollars per non-profit use. I've no idea who pays for these, if anybody does. There are three main websites I use for royalty-free images, sound and videos. Wikipedia, Wikimedia and NASA. I often find others through Google Images. I'm very careful to ensure I have the rights to use everything in my videos. So everything I use is either public domain, which is free of any restrictions, or Creative Commons, which generally allows any use as long as you credit the original author. I don't intend to make money from my videos, but I ensure that commercial use is allowed for all media, and I release my videos as Creative Commons rather than the more restrictive standard YouTube license. I give full credit for all media at the end of each video, even where I don't strictly have to. Sometimes I find that the picture I need simply doesn't exist. Or maybe it does, but it isn't free to use. Or it's simply too low quality for my purposes. In which case, I make my own. For simple diagrams, I prefer to use LibreOffice Draw. This is basic, but easy to use. I spent a fair bit of time ensuring this diagram of circumpolarity is astronomically accurate and to scale. For more advanced work, such as retouching photos, I use GIMP, also open source. This is more powerful, but a little harder to learn, and is often considered a free alternative to Adobe Photoshop. When I need a lot of objects to be positioned precisely, such as this equirectangular star chart, I use LibreOffice Calc, a spreadsheet program. I enter the coordinates of objects, and then create a graph of them. My spreadsheet and graphing skills are unreasonably good. If you ever hear a computer scientist complain about people who use a spreadsheet for things they shouldn't, they're talking about me. Animations are trickier, and I don't have much skill with these. I make animations using a series of still images, such as this animation of four static images created in LibreOffice Draw. I also use LibreOffice Calc for more complex animations. I set one cell as the frame number, with other cells using the frame number to update the position of objects on a graph, which I can then export as a series of images. And if I want to animate a photograph, as I did for twinkling stars and a supernova, I'll use GIMP to create the images. I've been learning Natron, a very powerful animation program with a steep learning curve and capabilities similar to Adobe After Effects. If I become good enough, I hope to use this to animate the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Once I've created the still images, which I number in order, I need to animate them. I use Linux, an open source operating system, which has an excellent command line program called Image Magic. I just need to run a simple command in the folder where I've put the images, and it creates an animated GIF in a few seconds. I'll also convert this into an MP4 video file, using Image Magic or an online converter. You'll see why shortly. When the presentation is complete, I go into presentation mode and take screenshots of each slide. I remove animations first, for reasons that will become clear soon. Some of my videos include pictures or animations of the night sky. I make these using Stellarium, an excellent free and open source program that I highly recommend for all astronomers. Images are simple screenshots, and I record videos using VLC, also open source. And finally, my visuals are complete. It's time to write the script. Unlike many YouTubers, I write my scripts on paper. I find this easier and more satisfying, but it's purely a personal choice. I prefer to use plain A4 paper, but I'll use whatever's handy. You might think I have to spend money on paper and pens, but I get so much stationery for Christmas. My scripts follow the slideshow, but not exactly. I often explain or point out something interesting that wouldn't fit on the screen, and of course full screen videos need additional narration. And sometimes written text and spoken words just don't come across quite the same way. When I've finished writing the script, I record the audio. I've been asked a few times why I don't film myself. There are a few reasons. First, these videos are about science, not my face. Second, a box on screen with my head in it would take up valuable screen space. And third, I can edit the audio without worrying about the video cutting and jerking. This means I don't need to re-record long stretches when I make a mistake. I plug in my gaming headset and record my narration using Audacity, another open source program. When that's done, I use Audacity's effects plugins to clean it up, removing unwanted noise, and save the resulting audio as a WAV file. 
Now I've got all the raw material, and it's time to put it together. I use Caden Live for this, an open source video editor that some professionals claim is superior to Adobe Premiere. It's fairly easy to start using, but it's the most complex piece of software in the whole process. I add the slide screenshots into the video channel, and the narration into the audio channel. It takes me an hour or two to listen to the audio, removing unwanted sounds like coughs and traffic, re-recording sections I'm not happy with, and aligning it correctly with the visuals. Remember I removed the animations from the slides. This is where I re-add them. Animated GIFs are great for slideshows, but here I use the converted MP4 movie files, overlaying them where the GIFs used to be. I also add any full-screen movies. And finally, I render the project as an MP4, with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 or Full HD, and a frame rate of 25 FPS. This usually takes about 10 to 20 minutes. I watch the completed video carefully to check for errors, caused by myself or by the various programs I used, and make additional edits if I have to. Finally, I upload it to YouTube, choose a thumbnail, and fill in the video description and other details. Before I make the video public, I also upload the slideshow. Since not everybody has LibreOffice, I convert it to Google Slides. This always needs a bit of editing, as Google Slides uses slightly different formatting so I need to realign images and maybe resize some text, as you can see in this screenshot. Animated GIFs convert to static images, so I need to replace the animations. Videos don't get uploaded here. I convert them to animated GIFs or static pictures, or just leave them out. The YouTube videos of the best quality, they include everything, like my narration and Stellarium animations, but the Google Slides let you copy text and images to make your own notes. And that's it! I flag the video as public on YouTube, and I'm done. I really enjoy making these videos. I love learning technology and astronomy, and my YouTube channel lets me do both at the same time. It also improves my teaching, giving me a greater understanding of the topics and a ready-made slideshow to show my students. And as a bonus, just between you and me, if I've lost my voice, as teachers often do, I can just put on the video and relax. I hope this was interesting to somebody. If it inspires anybody to make creative projects, even better. Remember, I knew nothing about making videos when I started this channel. And if I can do it, so can you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, and have an excellent day.